Welcome back to the Wizard's break room. I'm actually in here with Mrs. Wizard. We're chilling, taking a little break. The guys are out in the shop working. I decided to do a video for you guys this time around. Six vehicles. It could be SUVs, trucks, it could be anything that you absolutely must run away from. Not walk away. Run away from. Let's take a look. Now the vehicles I'm going to go through today are not necessarily one single vehicle. The difference in this do not buy video is going to be that they're packaged by engine or transmission problems. There'll be multiple slew of vehicles in a make or brand that have a certain engine. So this is really engine transmission problems. We'll go ahead and get started with any of the Ford F-150, 250, E-150 or 250, mm. Expedition or Excursion with the 5.4 three-valve Triton motor. Really? The 5.4 three-valve? You, you really do hate that one. You guys have just seen a couple of videos on that. We have a silver F-150 in the shop getting a new engine and a transmission. It's actually up and running, and we'll be doing a video on that soon. You can actually see it in the background. Everything's going according to plan, going well on that. We're getting close to the end on that one. That one is number 16 at $7,000 a pop. You do the math. Quite a lot of money made on 5.4 three-valve Triton engines. These have oil passage cam phaser issues, and just like in the one you see in the background where maintenance wasn't all that great, is really where the problem lies with these. The oil passages get blocked. You really can't clear them out with some sort of engine flush or anything like that. It just doesn't work. They come in clacking, making noises, misfire. There's check engine light for misfires and cam, crank correlation, all kinds of different things going on. And there is really no fix, just like in the video you guys just saw. There's no magic cure. There's no cheap fix. There's no magic snake oil you can put in and solve it. It's $7,000 or you don't get it fixed. That's how we do it in this shop. This is an extremely common problem. I would say if there's 10 F-150s on a used car lot with this engine, three or four are gonna have this problem. Is there some out there without this problem? Yeah. They've been maintained very well. But is it worth the gamble? You're getting ready to buy a $25,000, $30,000 truck. Is it worth the gamble? Not really. You could get one that's just barely ticking, just barely starting to make a noise, and you don't notice it, and six months later this thing is full on clack, 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 and you're like, oh my goodness, I should have never bought this vehicle. You guys don't know how many times I've heard that on a three-valve Triton, I should have never bought this vehicle. If you do find one of these vehicles with the 4.6, they're actually okay. They're a pretty decent engine. Obviously, it's not going to have the power of the 5.4, but they don't have as many of these problems really at all. The next one is any year Nissan Cube, Maxima, Altima, Rogue, Sentra. Any of these vehicles, 2006, 7, 8, 9, 10 range, there's a large range of these that have the CVT transmission. You guys know that I've done several videos on those, and they are very, very poor. They fail at a very high rate. These transmissions are absolutely 100% intolerant of skipped maintenance. If you don't religiously change the fluid and filter 30, 40,000 miles, every 30, 40,000 miles, they will fail. They will. It's not like a gamble, oh, maybe this one will get by, or they will fail at some point. But Car Wizard, a lot of those manufacturers say they don't need to be serviced. Yes, this is one of those where you find sealed for life. You don't need to service them. Ask the owners who have had these and had to put a transmission in it. How much money have they lost? Thousands. These will slip or shudder or have vibration while you're driving, kind of a weird rhythmic vibration or something like that. If you're test driving one and you feel that, you, you definitely shouldn't buy one. You shouldn't buy it anyway. But if you're gonna take that gamble, those are the things to look for. The common comment that I see with any of these that I'm gonna to mention today is Car Wizard. If you maintain these vehicles, they're, out, they're not that bad. 
But here's the reality that I've seen in the last 20 years in this business. 25% of Americans actually maintain their vehicles. That's it. The others go 10, 15, 20,000 mile oil changes. They do not service the transmission. And if you ask them about scheduled maintenance, they'll say, scheduled what? I don't, I don't do that. So 25% of Americans are actually really maintaining their vehicles. That means 25% of the cars you're looking at won't have these problems I'm talking about. The other 75 very likely could. So is it possible that it's been maintained and these problems won't be present? Yes, there is a 25% probability that is true. Keep in mind any of these cars I'm listing today are getting older, they got higher miles, and if anything's gonna be a weak link, these failures I'm mentioning is going to be definitely something to worry about. Transmission is five to six thousand dollars to replace it. I know from experience in the shop I worked at before that even from the dealership they're thirty eight hundred dollars or forty two fifty forty five hundred depending on where you get them just to buy the transmission that doesn't include the labor to remove it that doesn't include the fluids just buying the transmission is that much the covers you can't get them rebuilt cheaper nobody rebuilds these nobody rebuilds these. There is no manufacturing facility that exists. You get them from the dealer, and that's about it. Every time that I replaced one, it came from the Nissan dealership. You can call all your buddies, hey, do you rebuild these? Nope. Nobody rebuilds these. The next vehicles to never buy is the Buick Encore, Chevy Sonic, Chevy Trax, Chevy Cruze, any of these cars that have the 1.4 Ecotec turbocharged engine. We actually just had a dealership that's not far from us that has a Buick Encore. You guys saw it in a video. There's actually a dealership close by that actually is battling with one of these. The engine was bad, just like so many of them are. He's like, okay, I'll, I'll pay to go ahead and, and get a new engine put in. We called the dealership. We called all over the place. There are none. These engines are failing at such a high rate that even the dealership told us we will not have one available until 2024. There are none. Everyone that's out there to be bought has been bought. They're struggling to keep these things rebuilt and get them out for sale. It's that bad, guys. Trust me, it's that bad. These have major turbo problems. They have major engine internal problems, especially with rings, they burn oil, they can have bearing issues. Turbos are failing the most, they drop like flies. But just like I mentioned a minute ago with poor maintenance, any of these newer engines, 2015, 2018, 2020, they're making these cars now where if you don't maintain them, they're so cheaply made, they will fall apart very fast, in a hurry. A new engine, one of these, five to six grand. That's a lot of money. Especially when the car is about five to six grand. You can pick up one of these, Chevy Trax, Chevy Cruze, five, like Mrs. Wizard said, five or six grand. You can double that to put a new engine in it. So keep that in mind. You say, oh, there's a real nice Chevy Trax or a Chevy Cruze for sale at the dealership. They're only wanting $49.99. And you buy it. And then you realize you're going to put $59.99 into a new engine. You just lost a lot of money. The next group of cars not to buy are the larger GM vehicles, the Buick Enclave, GMC Acadia, Chevy Traverse, Cadillac ATS, CTS, CT6, any GM vehicle with 3.6 V6. You guys already know as well as I do, these engines are absolute trash. They have timing chain problems, Timing guide problems. You get a check engine light and it says cam crank correlation. The timing chain is stretched. And so many of these people let them go. They say, well, it still runs okay. It's a little sluggish. I don't have the money to mess with this, so I'm going to keep driving it. And the problem there is that when this is not fixed and you just let it go, it grenades the engine. The timing chain will break. The valves hit the pistons. And this has happened so many times. I've had so many of these in the shop where my engine won't start. 
We get to look at it, it cranks. I know the sound of a timing belt or timing chain brake. Instead of going da, 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 like a normal engine starting, they go ah, 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 ah. I, I know right away. You give them a call, it's time for a new engine. Oh no, I didn't expect that to happen. You should expect that on these if you don't take care of it. These are a very high failure rate engine as well. 67 grand to replace one of these. These are the class of vehicles that no one takes my advice. I get questions from people. What kind of car should I buy? An SUV, a car, this or that. What should I buy, Car Wizard? And of course I say a Toyota, a Highlander, a Forerunner, a Lexus. These are the vehicles you should buy. And it never fails that three months later they show up with a GMC Acadia. Well, we got a deal. It was $7,000 cheaper to get this one. I couldn't follow your advice on the Toyota because they're too high. They're too expensive, car wizard. We all know Toyotas and Lexus aren't the best looking vehicles on the road. They're not asking for what's a good looking vehicle, car wizard. They're asking what's a reliable, good vehicle to buy that'll last. But they never follow my advice. Like I said, they end up with a GMC Acadia. They show up, there's a check engine light. It's making rattling noises. I give them a quote. It's going to be five to six grand or seven grand to replace it. And they're like, oh, oh man, I should have bought that Toyota. I should have bought that Toyota. I've heard that at least 30 times. I should have bought the Toyota. I didn't end up saving a dime in the long run. The next group of cars to definitely run away from is Dodge Caravan, Chrysler Town & Country, Jeep Wrangler. Yes, the Jeep Wrangler, Dodge Avenger, and Dodge Journey. Really any of the Chrysler vehicles with, a, amazingly, a 3.6 V6. Something about that number across multiple manufacturers is bad engines and bad luck. These ones have problems with the cylinder heads cracking. It's a Fiat engine. It's made by Fiat. And then these are dropping like flies as well. Did you just say crackheads? No, not crackheads. Cracked heads. Although there's some people that are crackheads that buy these vehicles. But we're not talking about them. We're talking about the cylinder heads are cracked on these. Now, it's not as expensive. This is repairable. You don't have to replace the whole motor as long as you haven't driven it for 10,000 miles that way. But it gives the symptoms of a blown head gasket, overheating, misfiring, things of that nature. And you take it in and they say, oh, it's usually the, the bank that's closest to the firewall. That one's, the head's cracked. Now a lot of people would say, oh, car wizard, they fixed that by now. That was back, back in the day. That, that's not a problem now. Wrong. Eh, wrong-o. I have a buddy who is a master tech at a Chrysler dealership. You've probably seen the other Tyler on Hoovy's Garage. He's a master tech at the Dodge Chrysler dealership in Wichita, a top level tech. He's the top paid mechanic there. And I actually messaged him one day. I said, are you, are you guys still having this problem with the cracked heads on these Chrysler Dodge 3.6s? And you know what his response was? It wasn't, oh, that's been fixed by now. No. His response was, yeah, I'm actually taking the last cylinder bolt out of one of the heads right now on a newer vehicle. I'm replacing one as we speak right now. I was like, oh, that's still a problem. He goes, oh yeah, that's still a problem. So I don't want to hear anything about they fixed that by now. They haven't. This is one of those vehicles that it's usually right after you buy it. Not three or six months, but like a few days. I just bought a Dodge Journey. I just bought a Jeep Wrangler. It's overheating. And you bring it to the shop, it's a cracked head. So be very careful with that. When you road test these vehicles, if you're going to buy one, make sure it's not overheating or misfiring. A lot of these vehicles I just mentioned, they're not worth the gamble. It's kind of like you show up to go gambling at the casino and people are putting down $50, $100, and you say, I'm going to put down thirty grand." Would you do that? And possibly just lose thirty grand like that? No. And why would you do that with any of these vehicles? It is that bad of a gamble with these vehicles. So let's move on to the last one. And the last group I'm going to mention today is Nissan Titan, Nissan Armada, 
Infinity QX56 or QX80 with the 5.6 V8. Didn't you have the QX56? Yes, and I no longer do. These don't necessarily have engine problems as far as internal problems. What they have is catalytic converter problems. And when they fail, it actually sucks the chunks of the converter up into the engine and completely grenades the engine. It wipes it out. It's not easy to know when that time comes, but if you get a check engine light on one of these with catalyst inefficiency code, or you hear rattling in the exhaust, the problem is, is people keep driving it that way. They're like, eh, I don't have time for that right now. I don't have the money for that. I'll worry about that later. And that later turns into a new engine. This is a common problem as well. I probably went through at previous shop eight or 10 of these. But even besides that, even if you get a good running one, the fuel economy on these highway, city, it doesn't matter. It's 12 miles per gallon or 10 all the time, always. It's really, really bad on these. And in this economy, with gas prices so high, this is one of the last vehicles you should buy with the 5.6 Nissan engine in it. And even besides the engine being a problem, the interior of the rest of the vehicle in these vehicles falls apart really fast. That's one of the reasons why I got rid of the Infiniti QX56. Every time I turned around, this was failing, that was failing, an actuator, a power window motor. It just, it didn't stop. And finally, I had to stop. I said, no more. I'm done with this vehicle. I thought they looked pretty cool. I'd give it a shot. Maybe they're not as bad as they say they are. Oh yes, they're just as bad as they say they are. So even with me being a mechanic, and been able to get parts at wholesale and I can fix it at no labor, no labor charge at all. Even then it wasn't worth it. That tells you just how bad these are. You can expect in the first six months of buying any of these I just listed, you're gonna put three to 5,000 repairs into it. You're going to. It could be a radiator, it could be a fuel pump, it could be window motors. The things are gonna tally up really fast on these Infinity or Nissan based vehicles with the 5.6 V8. Another way to prove how bad these vehicles are, and that's fit, I'll close up with this. There's a reason why, even with car prices being so high right now, there's a very good reason why these Nissan Armadas and the QX56s are so cheap right now. Even they know it's a piece of junk. You say, but Car Wizard, I can get an Armada for 10 grand. No, don't do it. Run. Just like the 100 yard dash. Run away as fast as you can. Otherwise, you're gonna be calling your mechanic, your local car wizard, with all the complaints I just listed. Oh, and as a bonus, for the love of God, don't buy a BMW M5 that has to have new rod bearings every 100,000 miles. They are scrap metal on four wheels. All of them are. Don't buy one of those, they are trash. Okay, I'll, I'll end with that. So if you're curious what kind of tools they're using out there in the shop right now to work on those cars, it's on my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. The tools we use in the shop are listed for sale there. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. And make sure to hit the subscribe button because as you can see, there's more videos coming, a lot of videos coming. Thanks for watching.